So welcome back to the channel again. Uh, this is another video, a lockdown video again, unfortunately. Um, I really can't wait to get back out there and start taking some decent images. Um, so a lot of people always asking me, you know, what, what sort of gear do I use? What do I use for this and that? So I'm just going to run through some of the main gear that I actually use when I'm doing my wildlife vlogs and for producing these sort of videos as well. So we're going to just run through the equipment uh, very quick. If you've got any questions afterwards, you know, please drop it in the comments below. If I've missed anything, then please let me know. That'd be great. So this is my main camera body. It's a Canon 5D Mark IV. Absolutely astounding bit of kit. Very rugged, very robust. Uh, it's a full frame camera. Um, so we're getting really good um, images at even higher ISOs. Um, whereas we didn't on the other camera we've got, which is a 7D Mark II. Um, and it does everything I want. It's great for video. Um, it's great for stills. Just a great all-round camera. It's all weatherproof. Um, yep, stunning bit of kit. So that's what I'll normally be using when I go out and do all my wildlife photography. This is a 7D Mark II. Uh, this was my first real, what I would call, real wildlife camera body. Um, I love it. It's a crop sensor, um, so it will get you a little bit closer to the action when you need it. It's probably not so good in, in low light levels, though. When the ISO starts to go up, this does start to struggle a little bit, and you can get a lot of noise in the images. But until I went to the full frame, you know, this was this was the camera I was using. And I, it was some great images with it. I really got some good images with it. Since I've had the Canon 5D Mark IV, I must admit I've not used it much. In good light, I wouldn't be scared to use it. It's still going to give me some great images. But I really just use it now as a backup body, just in case I have to have any problems with the 5D Mark IV. And touch wood, I haven't had any problems to date with it. But at least it's there, so if I need a spare body, I've got that. Um, but yeah, absolutely another great bit of kit, like the 5D Mark IV, very robust. And I've had this for a good few years now, and it's still, you know, absolutely no issues with it at all. What you'll see with this body, I've actually got a little silk mini tripod here. This is something I, I think I brought off eBay um, fairly cheap. Um, this little silk mini you know it's great just for for standing the bodies up and again you know i've used it if i've got maybe the 50 millimeter lens on or or even the 24 to 70 lens on i've even used it um when i've had the 100 to 400 lens on when i want to get really low to the ground um, i've actually used this little tripod yeah as daft as it sounds it's a good little bit of kit um i, I think i paid about 10 pound for it but in some circumstances, it can be a real lifesaver when you can't get a tripod in where you want to go and you just want to mount something small. Um, yeah, it can do the job for you. And I always carry this around in my bag. So you guys who are regular to my channels will have seen this before. This is my Canon uh, 100 to 400 millimeter lens, uh, f 4.5 to 5.6 absolutely amazing lens um, for wildlife it's a great carry around lens um, and it it is just superb the you know the image is so sharp off it it's absolutely amazing very versatile and even i've even used it for like macro photography because the focus distance it will come down to really short focal distances so even for that you know it absolutely superb I'm not going to be pretend to be any techie with any of this equipment. You probably know me by now. I just love to shoot um, video and shoot images. Um, I'm not a massive technophobe, um, but you know, I'll just tell you straight how I find these things. But uh, as I say, this is an amazing lens, fully weather sealed as well. So there's no problems when you go out shooting the wildlife. Um, yeah, really recommend it. And, and on the Canon 5D Mark IV body, that I use it on, it works absolutely superb. So what I sometimes use as well as the 100-400, uh, this is a 1.4 converter. 
So this puts, you know, when the when the 100 400 is at its longest range at the 400 millimeters, this pushes it out to about 570 millimeters. So when we want to get closer to the action, you know, we can use this. Downsides sometimes to these is maybe the focus is a little bit slower and maybe the picture isn't quite as sharp. Sometimes we get a little bit of a softer edge on the images. But you know, if the if the wildlife is a distance away, it's normally pretty good. If it's not that far away, sometimes you're better to um, use the 100 400 without the converter on and maybe just crop the image in if you need to. Um, but yeah, really useful bit of kit. It does reduce the uh, f-stops, so you lose some light using this. So again, you know, if the light conditions aren't great, um, can be a little bit difficult. But if the light conditions are right, you know, this can be a real great asset to your kit. Um, so yeah, again, thoroughly recommend something like this as well. So this next lens is the uh, 24 to 70 millimeter Canon L series lens. So it's another professional series lens, uh, f 2.8, so we can get some really shallow depth of field in it. Another great all-round lens, a bit like the 100 to 400. This is just a lower version of that. So if we're doing landscapes, um, occasion I've done a few weddings, which I really hate doing, but you know I've been roped into doing a few weddings and I've done those. Uh, this is an amazing lens for all those sort of things. Um, superb quality, pin sharp, even though it's a zoom lens, really good sharpness. And as I say, we can get some fairly shallow depth of field and in difficult conditions, you know, we can get in there with low light. We can open up that aperture, um, getting down to the f 2.8 if we need to, and really get some good shots out of it. So that's another great all-round lens. Not a wildlife lens, but for everything else, that's probably my next go-to lens, really. So this next lens is the macro lens. This is a 100 millimeter f 2.8. Uh, macro lens um, again it's a Canon um, it's a fixed focal lens so you know the quality is absolutely amazing um, the sharpness the clarity macro photography I find very difficult personally um, but when you do it right it can be absolutely stunning some of the images you can produce can actually be amazing um, so as I said sometimes I've used my 100 400 lens for macro but this is a proper macro lens. Uh, you can get really close into your subject. You need some light in there to make sure the subject's okay. Um, and maybe one day I'll do a little bit of a video on macro photography uh, because it, as I say it's not something I'm very good at. Um, I would love to be good at it. Um, as I say that you can get some stunning images, but it's not something I use very often, but I probably should. I probably should use that more. Um, but yeah, that's probably the third lens in my arsenal lenses that I really use. And I think other than that, we've probably only got one more lens to look at. And that last lens, this is actually the um, Canon 50 millimeter. This is a 1.4 lens, so we can get really shallow depth of field. And again, this is a fixed focal lens. So with this being a fixed focal lens, we are getting some superb clear shots. This is what they call the nifty 50. It's a very lightweight, easy to handle lens. Looks a bit weird when you put it on something like a Canon 5D Mark IV because the body's so big compared to the lens. Um, but if you're doing things like, I don't know, portraiture, something like that, um, or just you know maybe out in the town doing some street photography this is a brilliant lens for doing street photography I've had this a long time again I don't use it that much but sometimes it's great just to get it out and with it being a fixed focal lens it makes you walk it makes you look at your subject look at your images um, you can't just zoom in and out so what that makes you do is you become the zoom, your legs become the zoom. You have to walk to where you want to be to use this lens. Uh, but yeah, you can get some stunning images off this. What we're going to move on to now, and probably need a bit of a bigger desk for this, but 
Um, the, the other item, the other key item, I mean, the big thing is a tripod. Um, when I say big, not just in size, but you know, this is one of your key bits of equipment, especially when you're doing videos, because you need something really sturdy to mount the camera on while you're doing the videos. So I, not long ago, brought this, um, I think it's called Art Size. I'm never quite sure how to pronounce it. But this is a carbon fiber tripod, um, extremely sturdy. You know, I love this tripod. Um, it feels really balanced. It feels really sturdy and strong. You know, you can, you put it down and you just know your camera's not gonna be shaking around or anything like that. Um, absolutely great bit of kit. Um, yeah, and, and it, it, it's got no center column, which is what I wanted when I was doing my photography because with wildlife, I want to get low down. So this, this tripod's got no center column on it, so I can get really low to the ground if I need to. But it is also quite a tall tripod. I'm not a tall person, but it's good that I can get the tripod up above my head almost. Um, and that way, you know, if I want to shoot over something or whatever with live view or video, I can do that from the back of the camera. Um, and you know I can, I can get a lot more reach and also the long legs they will help you you know if you're in an area where you've got um, a, maybe a sloping surface the balance you know you might need one leg extended a lot more than the others to get the tripod level so that's really good it's got a little tilting head on it as well so we can level it up so all round yep a really great tripod and as I go through these things, um, in the description on the video, there's a link to my gear page on my website. So, you know, if you want to see any of this stuff or you want any links to anything, please go and check that out and you'll find all the bits and pieces in there. What I also purchased recently to go on this tripod is this fluid head. Um, I've got a couple of other um, uh, tripod heads, which I'll show you in a minute. But this fluid head, for me, it really is the business. Um, especially doing videos because it allows me to do smoother videos as I'm filming the wildlife and I can track it and follow it around. Um, it balances the camera. It will protect the camera against damage because you know you know when you let go of it, it's not suddenly going to shoot down or drop anywhere. You know, even if it does drop, it's pretty well protected because it's got the fluid head in there to give some friction against the movement. So you know your gear is going to be protected. So that's pretty good from that side. So yeah, I really recommend this this um, you know this art size tripod with this Manfrotto. It's a Manfrotto fluid head uh, 502. Um, absolutely great bit of kit, really is. So I mentioned as well, I've got another couple of uh, tripod heads. This one's the um, a gimbal head. So this again. For wildlife lenses, you know, you get great balance. Um, you can balance the camera. You know it's not going to drop like a ball head. Um, so the camera gear is always protected. This one's actually made by Kenro. Um, and again, a good sturdy carbon fiber uh, tripod head, gimbal head. Um, a little bit weighty, a little bit heavy. Um, but yeah, great if you're just sitting somewhere, particularly birds in flight, you know, if you, if you're trying to capture birds in flight, this is a great tripod head. Um, you know, you can you can use this all day long. It's going to be comfortable. You're not going to have any weight on yourself. It's going to be absolutely brilliant and very very sturdy. So I really recommend something like that as well. Although having said that, maybe the fluid head might take over from that. The fluid head is a bit of a combination between a gimbal head to me and a ball head. So, you know, I'm not sure whether that would just take over completely as I start to do some more filming. I've not used the fluid head that much yet, but, you know, we'll see how we get on with that. And then the other tripod head I've got is the, the ball head, which is actually fitted to the um, camera that's recording this video. So I can't physically show you that at the moment, but that's a, a Manfrotto ball head I've got on there as well. Um, but again, that's probably the one I will use least now. More really in this sort of situation I'll use it because it's easy to set up. But the issue with things like that is when you're using wildlife gear on it, there's always a danger that if you don't lock everything down and you pick everything up to move, all of a sudden the camera tips over and you're potentially going to damage your body or your lens or whatever. So I definitely think you know moving to the fluid head 
uh, or the gimbal head is, is, is a bonus really. So that's covered my bodies and my lenses for my wildlife and my for general photography, landscape photography, nature photography, all those sort of things. So then we're getting into a couple of the other accessories we're using. So um, we've got this Canon flash, uh, 430EX3RT. Um, so this is um, a radio transmitter flash. So we can use it in conjunction with a trigger. So the trigger can be mounted on top of the camera and the flash unit can be mounted anywhere to give either some backlight, some surround light or whatever. For my main wildlife and nature photography, where this is going to come in useful is in um, macro photography. Because for macro, sometimes you need that bit of extra light in there. You can get a lot of harsh shadows and using a fill-in flash can actually take some of those shadows away. Obviously, if I'm doing a bit of portrait photography or, as I say, getting roped into a wedding occasionally, then again, you know, the flash will come in useful for those sort of things. It's not something I use very often. And one of my big problems is I forget how to use them when I come to use them and then have to have a refresher before I actually start using it. Um, they are fairly simple, but, you know, sometimes flash photography, if you're not careful, can make things look very unrealistic. So you're trying to make things look as natural as possible. Um, and with flash, that can be difficult. So if I am using flash, it tends to be, as I say, with a trigger, and I'll mount the flash away from the subject, maybe bouncing off a wall or a ceiling if I'm doing any indoor photography. Um, and then outdoors, you know, just trying to get the right angle for a macro photograph so you're not casting really sharp shadows. And I'm really, really turning down the power when I'm using this for macro. So all I'm doing really is getting some fill-in flash um, and hopefully the natural light will give most of the light for the subject. So when we're out doing wildlife, obviously the other thing we need is a pair of binoculars. These ones are Vortex Diamond binoculars. Um, again, you know, all the links are in the, uh, if you go over to my gear page on the website, you'll see the links to those. These are a great little bit of kit. Um, very lightweight, very neat, uh, nice green uh, colour so it fits in with the surroundings. Um, and yeah, pin sharp, um, easy to focus, easy to use. I've, I've struggled with lots of pairs of binoculars that I've had in the past, um, but these seem to be really good. Um, re really, really pleased with these. Not had them in that long, but yeah, a great bit of kit. Some people would just use their wildlife lens on the camera to spot the wildlife. And, and that does work, but I just find that sometimes if you're sitting there for a long period of time and you just want to be scanning the countryside to see what's around, a pair of binoculars is great for that. You'll see birds that you, you don't know are there. With the naked eye, you'll look around a field and you won't even realise it's there. Get a pair of binoculars out and you'll spot things. You will spot them with a the camera, but it's certainly not as comfortable and easy. Um, it's okay if it's on a tripod, but a pair of binoculars, you just seem to cover so much more area with a pair of binoculars. So yeah, thoroughly recommended when you go out doing your wildlife photography, take a pair of these with you. So then we come down to the other bits of kit. So we've covered most of the photography side of things. And now we're going to start looking at a little bit of the vlogging stuff. So there's not so much of this. So, you know, we are getting towards the end of the video. Um, but first of all, this is um, an external microphone. So on the back of the camera body, um, there is a microphone built in. But when I'm filming video from the main camera, um, you know, from the DSLR, I like an extra microphone. So this is very simple, just plugs into the side of the camera um, nice and easy. Uh, it's called, again, I can't pronounce it, Etitude or something like that. Um, external microphone. Again, look up the links on my on my gear page on the website. Um, but yeah, th this is a great little big kit and, and by far improves the sound quality coming out of the main DSLR. Um, and you can get these either directional or dual directional. So they'll you know, the, the unidirectional will obviously pick up sound from just in one direction, wherever it's pointing. This will pick up sound all around. So 
it'll pick up sound from whatever I'm recording in front of me, but if I'm talking into the camera at the same time, it'll also pick up me as well. Um, probably won't cut out so much surround sound, which is the downside of using an all-round um, microphone, but yeah, it does work for me, so I, I find it okay. So this is the last link in the jigsaw puzzle. So this is what I use to do my vlogging. So we're using an iPhone 11. Uh, we have a Blink 500 um, microphone system. So I've got a, a lapel microphone down to a transmitter into the receiver on the side of the iPhone, and then that's recording all the sound onto the iPhone. That's mounted onto a DJI Osmo Mobile 2. Um, so this is a gimbal which allows me to keep everything nice and steady. So when I'm moving around, you know, nothing's going to be too jumpy. Um, it's going to take anything, any movement or, or me shaking around out of the camera. Um, we can video either way uh, on the back of the camera, on the front camera. Um, I tend to use the front camera because I find the quality is better. Um, but yeah, I just record my videos on that. Um, some people use uh, a proper DSLR. Um, some people will use things like GoPros. Um, this is what I use at the moment. Um, it's a little bit bulky sometimes, but it works for me. You know, I can set that down. I can record some video. Um, and then, you know, that's recording really the B-roll stuff and, and me vlogging to camera. Um, whereas the main DSLR is recording all the wildlife stuff. So yeah, so that, that seems to work fine. Um, there may be better solutions. You know, it's probably not as good quality as another maybe Canon M50 or something like that, um, which might be an idea going forward in the future, but it works at the moment. So that's about it for the insight into my gear. So I have got some other bits of kit, things like filters for landscape photography and that sort of thing. And I'm a bit of a gadget man, so I do like the occasional gadget as well. Um, but yeah, but that covers most of my main bits of kit that I use. I hope that's been useful to you. Um, as I say, there's, if you go over to the gear page on my website, and there's a link in the description below, you'll find you know, more information on the different, different products and links to them. Um, so, but if you have got any questions, you know, just drop them in the comments below. Um, I'll try and answer them. As, as I said earlier on in the video, you know, I'm not a techie person, so I couldn't tell you all the megapixels and everything else and, you know, with the cameras. I'll just give you an overview of what I'm using and hopefully you might find that useful. So if you like the video, please do click the like button below. That really helps my channel. And if you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, it'd be great to have you on board for future videos. And all that remains is me to say, whatever you're doing, have a great day and I'll catch up with you again soon. Bye for now.